Okay, day one or drawing one in my watercolor month, July 2021. I think that one thing that Tamil Laporte from willowing.org and I got in common this year is that we really want to finish off our sketchbooks. So instead of designating one book for my one month watercolor month, I will try and work and finish off some of my random sketchbooks. One of the sketchbooks is from Atisa and I peeled off this commercial strip, this belly band, but I kept the belly band because look at this artwork here. That is just stunning, right? <laughs> so I was thinking about starting up with a loose rendition of this because I got myself the Liquitex acrylic ink for one reason. Instead of using masking fluid, I want to try to you do my highlight with acrylic ink. I've never done that before, so it needs to be tested out, right? <laughs> uh, I don't hate masking fluid, but I don't love it either because it just gives sometimes when you peel it off a harsh line. And on some of my paper pads, it actually peels off the paper also. So I want to try and see if I can use white ink and get used to it throughout this watercolor month challenge. I got this sketchbook in a landscape size from Cardi Papers. I really enjoy working with these papers because I know when purchasing their papers, I also support, in this case, uh, local artists from Nepal. So it's like a win-win situation. <laughs> it's a sketchbook that's been ongoing for a long time. So if we just do a quick flip through of it, we might bump into a date. Yeah, right here. Eileen's Askalet <laughs> As Oh my god, she took several animals and pumped into one and called it a Alas Cattle Tallow. Oh my god, I can't even say it. But it's from the <laughs> November twenty eighteen. So uh, now we got a date on some of the pages in this sketchbook. Uh, here I'm following uh, just a picture I saw online, but I'm using the Debbie Epps palette of the In the Vineyard set. Here it is the musical Scrapper. She's streaming on the 13th of December 2018, and I'm doing a paint along together with her watching her stream yeah this sketchbook goes way back man Gene the musical scrapper stream I think most of these uh, pages in this sketchbook because it's on landscape site um, it just is great for doing landscape or long paintings <laughs> so now I'm just quickly flipping through it Watercolor, it seems to be like watercolor is uh, what I've been using the most. Oh, I like this one. It's really like, I don't know, dream, dreamish, foggy. I like that one. This is negative painting. Summer. And why not? A potato. <laughs> it's actually a cute potato. Oh, this is from 2019, so it's already been a year. Oh, it's from Phipps Sketch a Day, and the topic for that day was an elephant. I recall that on Twitter we were giving prompts by Phipps. And uh, every day we had to draw one of these prompts. This is also from Phipps Sketch A Day. We should make a rendition of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, this, it's so fun with sketchbooks that stretch over years because then they got like history in it. And this is uh, Phipps Sketch A Day in Egret. Egret, or what? I can't even <laughs> pronounce it. It's a bird. Put a bird on it. 
Here we got some eggs. Eggs. <clears throat> Don't really know what this is. Here Janet is streaming the 24th of April 2020. Uh, this is a Kathy Arbor stream, the 7th of May 2020, where she's doing these beautiful, beautiful, I don't even know what they're called, pop, puppies. Oh. oh, I know exactly what this is. This is Magicals, where you take a leaf from your garden and then um, place it on a wet wet page saturated with magicals lift it off cool and fun technique this is actually from a book I remember it's a rendition of the Chrysler building <laughs> uh, it, I don't know if it shows up on the stream but I used a lot of texture paste on the background and smeared it with magicals and then it was something I saw from a, a book about watercolor techniques. Hey, I even wrote it here. Oh, lucky me. William Van Allen, the Chrysler Building. So, <laughs> lucky me that I remember to write who did this. Oh, here I received, I think it was the Paul Rubens. Or was it my liquid uh, aqua watercolors? It's, this is simply just swatch out. So instead of swatching it out on a normal basis, I just drew a random series of puppies and then did that. This is just one long one trying to utilize the full spread. But, <laughs> but you know what? Making a full spread in a shaped journal like this is really difficult so I think this is the only full spread that we're gonna see here we got like more landscape with watercolors some of them <laughs> really look like generic tutorials oh the, here I received the Durban graphitin pens so I swatched them all out, and then instead of making regular swatches, I just drew a random pattern, abstract pattern, and then swatched out the pencils inside this. Oh, I remember this page. I received the shimmery set from Paul Rubens, and uh, I also received some shimmery paints from Fanga. And then I'm comparing them with my current set of Debbie Epps shimmery paint because this is all the shimmery paint that I have. Uh, it looks like more because I swatched this one on white paper and then on black paper, but it's the same set. Uh, okay, here, <laughs> here I'm figuring out that on certain sketchbook paper, some paint look really similar so I got the Windsor Nutest artist grade and then the Cotman underneath comparing it with the student grade Van Gogh and also the Da Vinci paint and the Schminke I just wanted to have some high-end paint over here and then the student grade paint over here to see how the paper received the different types of paint because I kind of noticed working on the Cardi paper that it's so receiving watercolor pigments well and as you can see there is not much difference so hooray thumbs up for the paper <laughs> I'm still working with swatches here okay this is a fun one carrot people have you heard about those it's where you're trying to make loose shape of people in your watercolor drawings so I actually am practicing <laughs> carrot people <laughs> on this spread. Oh my god, look at him. This is so funny. That is so funny. Yeah, oh, I love this expression on this guy here. And this is like the one from Disney's Up. 
or how Robert De Niro was looking today. Oh my God. It's so fun growing up and watching your favorite actress and actresses aging because you kind of want them to stay as you recall them back in the 80s. Um, this is Paint with Janet. Oh, I think it's a paint along from one of Janet M. Young's streams. Awesome. This is also from a Janet M. Young stream. Draw with Janet. Seems like I hashtagged it and must have shown it on Twitter or something. It's from August 2020. This is a paint along done together with Kathy Arbor stream the 13th of August 2020. And I actually think that that's the last painting I've done in this sketchbook. So let's see, we got like one. Two, three, four. We got five sheets left in this rectangular sketchbook. So let's finish it off if we can doing this watercolor month, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna try and make my rendition of this artwork here from the Artesa sketchbook using these supplies. This is a palette gifted to me from a ceramic creator called Helle and it was a happy mail and it is so awesome. Look, tiny cute little holders for in this case Daniel Smith. I got Hansa Yellow. I got Hermitip Hermitip Brown <laughs> Mayan Blue Kyanite pink and shadow violet and then I got some leftover tubes from Daniel Smith containing the Mayan orange and Piemonte genuine and I also got an oh, Jado, Jado it genuine green <laughs> and then this is just uh, French ultramarine I want to use up these tubes. They've been lying around in my table for a month. And uh, I don't throw it out even though it's totally squeezed out because there's still enough in them to last just one last painting. I'm going to sketch with a water-soluble pencil from Durban. It's the Graffitin Dark Indigo. I like to uh, sketch with a water-soluble pencil in this case. We would love to have like a total straight horizon line, but instead of doing it in pencil, I think I should try. Should I trust? Yeah, okay. I should try later on to when I paint, used some uh, tape to get that totally straight horizon line. I'm going to approach this drawing a little bit differently and um, I want my sketch lines to show up because I'm streaming so you're gonna see you know tons of sketch lines and I'm going to hope that I can um, make this easy for me because this watercolor month is not about you know spending a ton of hours on just one drawing because it would wear you out and then you would like not come back to this book tomorrow because if it takes like a lot of time you know what I mean like it has to be like fast and easy so <laughs> I'm gonna make it easy for myself by doing it in a loose style my brushes, I think everybody who's making an upload when they're watercoloring, they always talk about their supplies and their brushes. It is a Maestro Kalinsky brush by Da Vinci, round eight. And then I also got a Kalinsky called oh, Marike, size three. I can hardly read what it says. I know, Kalinsky is like animal hair. I just like to work with these brushes. 
So, yeah. I'm not even gonna go into the discussion about animal cruelty. Uh, what to say is that when I started watercoloring, I um, listened to streamers and read books. And look, here we got a piece of magical. What did I tell you guys about magical showing up? There is a pigment of magical just blooming up from this page, hidden from when I last used magical in this journal. I'm telling you guys, it's like New Year's Eve confetti. It just pops up years, sometimes even like decades <laughs> later. Oh man, but you gotta love or hate that quality. Look how nicely my lines are just dispersing on the page. I can still see it. I don't think the camera picks it up, but I can still see it. Okay, I really would love to use this uh, Mayan orange for the sky. So my colors may deviate from my reference photo because I'm depending on these supplies here. But let's go in with um, first some Mayan blue on the top of the skyline here. If you don't like that the page is bending like this is, you can take your water mister and mist the back of the page. And as soon as the paper starts soaking in the water from the back, it will uh, relax and lie more flat but it will make the drying time longer. So if you're doing something with a ton of layers where you need to dry the layers in between, it's just a pita having wet the background because then you have to really wait a long time. But in this session, I'm trying to aim for something that's quick. So I'm simply just going to try and make a wet and wet wash and here I know that a lot of people would like cringe because I take a fairly expensive brush and with the feral tip with the tip dipping into this tube don't do that don't do that at home <laughs> you may destroy your your brush but I have to say I am very rough on my supplies for me, it's a tool, and as soon as it's entering my room, I um, I sometimes forget what I paid for it, you know, so it's really difficult for me to treat it with proper respect because I sometimes forget what's uh, the good stuff and what's the inexpensive stuff. But I think maybe that helped me to be more playful okay I'm just taking some hands of yellow because this Mayan orange is not giving me that yellow yellow hue that this um, sky got I wish that I had strong hands. <laughs> I have uh, weak fingers today, so I can't really try and force out pigment from this tube. So I'm just going to take it slow and dip and pick up pigments, just taking it slow. Okay, on this wash here, there suddenly is an area with something blue right here. And also blue underneath the waterline here. Now you're probably wondering, why am I totally ignoring, you know, 
have to sketch in a ton of boats and boat things <laughs> but it's kind of deliberate because I want to have a, a loose um, loose watercolor painting so I'm trying not to worry about having to go over with a black color and sketch in all the boats and then my plan is that I'm hoping I can lift off some of the colors where I need to put in highlights so just wish wish me luck <laughs> I hope it's gonna work so far I actually like what I'm seeing maybe a little bit more red here on the water okay so far I think that I kind of mimic the sky into the water so let's dry this up and see what we get <laughs> we're having a little painting intermission <laughs> cats on the table okay so we're back and it's dried up and I think that uh, now I would like to work on the horizon uh, line <laughs> you know this um, shoreline here and I can see on the reference drawing it is so clever like all the background is orange right so if I leave out a square I actually for free get <laughs> a lantern with a little bit of light in it so I have to keep that in mind but first I have to accomplish to do like a totally straight horizon line I got a pencil mark so I know what to aim for and I want to show you guys a trick uh, <laughs> I got two lipsticks from Dior and they got this square casing I utilize them in my art room I lay them down like this and then I rest my ruler on top of it and then this metal ferrule on the brushes I just make sure that it touches the edge of the ruler and then I am actually able to make a, a straight line without using any tape or masking it off or trying to do it with holding my breath and crossing my fingers <laughs> so so sorry if you're gonna see the, the scalp of my head while I do this but um, I have to lean up um, you know <laughs> to see where I'm drawing I want to go in with the Mayan blue mixed up with a little bit of the brown uh, what was it called again permitted genuine <laughs> Because you know the quest is to use up these tubes so let's see what happens it just have to soak a little bit to be activated come on baby here we go yes can you see how the brown mixed with the blue gives me like a darker color but it's not black it's like hmm. I don't know it's got its own like, specialty little hue there but that oh I'm so lucky some of it flaked off maybe I can uh, leave it right there to soak up with some water I'm telling you guys watercolor goes a long way so that's why I'm so frugal I think that I need a lot of this color so not uh, to run out of it I'm just gonna mix myself a little puddle of it here nice dark one not total black but like a dark color with a blue sheen to it so it's not like totally black black okay I think the horizon line is straight 
as it is. So first I'm just going to And look how I just can go back and forth, strengthening the line if I want to. So, ta-da, you got yourself a horizon line <laughs> with a little bit of cheetah method. And now for the next cheetah method, it is to flip the drawing upside down so you know so the gravity won't pull paint downwards destroying a nice crisp line so you can be it's kind of messy without worrying that the paint will destroy your crisp line I think the horizon line is uh, made out of a forest and not mountains so I'm gonna go for that crazy look that an uneven forest would would have it's funny how there's like no Sun in this painting it would be like totally tempting to blot out a white circle in the horizon line to to be a sunset but they chose not to so I'll do the same that's so cool about you know using reference photos you don't really have to think sometimes so it makes you create more stuff because the thinking process is kind of taken out of there now I want to mix in some of this jaded, jaded it green. Wish I could pronounce the correct. Oh man, and I lost the lid of the tube, so we better use it. <laughs> jaded, jaded it green. Oh. Put in some of the brown with it and I want to just dab it in at the bottom line to make that darker in some places so it gives like this faux impression that there is a, a forest in the back and then a green area in the front of the forest so that the horizon line kind of got layers I think that I will not be consistent with this dabbing just start in the end of the drawing and see if I like it or not and then kind of yeah not be like totally consistent so I'm mixing in mostly water right now to get that kind of black paint gray bluish paint gray along with it now okay I like that oh my god I forgot to leave out a spot for the <laughs> the orange light okay okay what to do I don't want to blot it off because then it comes off in a round circle from the tissue paper so I am crossing my fingers that I'm able to scrape it off after it's dry I might be because uh, I don't think that there is any phthalo colors in either the green or the Mayan okay that was the horizon line then let me see what I can do with the shoreline here oh, what's it called the, the the place here where there is a boat I think I want to go in with just concentrated 
blue mayan to start with. Once again, we need a straight line. So I'm taking my lipsticks. <clears throat> the line work is um, interrupted by a white boat. So somehow I need to get that effect to It doesn't matter whether this one is uh, straight on with the horizon line because it's like a, a boat bridge so it can actually be, be slanted in different angles. Oi, I twitched it a bit. Okay, here you go. I made it like uh, in a watery <laughs> sketch right here. So I think that I will try and paint some of all these uh, wooden pillars. And here is actually just really dark. So let's mix up some of that dark color. Still trying to be totally sketchy sketchy. Okay, I like that. Then we got some reflection in the water from these pillars. So I think I'm just going to wet the water first because they are so close to each other. And even though it's a little bit difficult, I will try and make this shadow here. I can see that there also is some yellow in the reference photo. Let's try and just plot in some of that yellow. And it's like very strong in the reference photo, so I think it's okay that I can go in equally strong. And it's got like this yellow reflection on the boat. Okay, I'm trying to make more of that black paint, the bluish paint gray. <laughs> Let's see. We got a boat. We got a boat coming up here, shadow there, a 
the railing or what's it called? Jelly. This is probably so vague in the stream that it's impossible for you guys to really see what I'm doing. <coughs> not perfect, but not bad. It's going to turn out okay in the end. I'm a little bit quiet now because now I'm in that sketching phase so to me it's uh, difficult to <laughs> wrap my head about also talking <coughs> I like that I get the first curves of the boat down so that I know what areas to avoid now where I have to paint in the background You know what, I'm going to bring the camera more down so you actually can see what I'm doing. Okay, so far I got this. <laughs> the shape of the book is making it difficult to show. Okay, and now comes an important part. I think I would call it like, in my terminology, know your limitations or don't push your luck. Because um, when you're watching tutorials when people are doing like this forest horizon line then of course we need the shadow that's reflecting in the water from the forest and I'm thinking that the, f the bottom of the forest would be darker than the top of the forest so I'm not interested in diluting the saturation of the pigments in the bottom of the forest so when I see tutorials <laughs> where they paint this horizon line goes in while the paint is still moist and damp with a damp brush and pull the pigments down into the water nine out of ten times i have experienced an unsatisfactory satisfactory uh, result because if my brush is wetter than the paper it will bloom upwards and push the pigments from the dark forest bo bottom upwards so the forest bottom becomes lighter or worst case scenario it will dilute the whole um, color value from the bottom of the forest because pigment is running into the wet wash so I always do that, I dry it up completely so it's totally dry and then I also enjoy leaving a fraction of white showing between the forest, the shoreline and the water. So the tip here is, <laughs> in my case, I know my limitations, I, I don't, I rarely have lucky strokes going in with a damp brush pulling down pigment just a sheer layer that will emulate the um, the shadow from the forest so uh, you know <laughs> so right now I'm just 
having a little bit of pigment on my brush not a lot and then I will try and see first if I can go in and leave myself this um, lighter water surface and it is one of those where you can't speak or barely breathe while you're doing it <laughs> But some people just get it on the feeling and make it into a skill that they just can do. And others, like like myself, need to kind of know where not to push my luck. So I choose this method instead. But I think that sometimes streamers are showing it because it would be a, a natural thing to do while you got the pigment on your palette. So um, just you're working on the shoreline anyway. Why not finishing it up in one go? But I, I truly just enjoy watercolor and it involves drying trying time so I just accept okay and remember that I forgot to leave out this orange highlight for the lantern I'm gonna go in and then just paint myself like a like a like a larger forest right here Hopefully it will work. <laughs> Let's see. And then of course since I enlarged the forest, I must also enlarge the following shadow of it down here. And now it's wet. So maybe I should take advantage of the wetness of the page. To put in a, a dark stroke because it will spread out and look like a shadow a little bit blurry and then I can refine the line work when it's dried up so I would do like this and then I think it would suit the painting if I worked a little bit on this water right here. And then at the same time wetting this area so I can put down some kind of shadow work from this lantern like a ball but I would prefer like mixing up a little bit more of that kind of really dark value just to dot in here perfect does it need anything up here maybe like this <coughs> okay so there you got your your lantern now we have to work on the <laughs> shades of the other boats and look how it's just a lot of cluster of tall uh, masts 
and the bottom ends up in a shape of a boat that's kind of blurred out so if I just try and make some triangular shapes of boats maybe just maybe I will get away with it We are trying our best and of course this will have like a sail on it somehow maybe if I did like that and then maybe some some dark basically just messing up this place in the background and hoping that <laughs> these uh, the line work to come now is going to bring it an image Deliberately, I am using a different color for the background than on the boat that's nearest to the eye. But it seems like there's like no rhyme or reason to the cluster of boats here. So I can in fact go a little bit crazy with this line right here. Now my brush is a little bit dry, so I'm having like a a dry brushed uh, stroke right now. I kind of like that because it seems like it's uh, helping with that blurry vision of boats. Okay, let's give this a rest and see how we can work on this. I'm going to wet the whole area around here and get it ready to put in some shadow from all those masks. Is it called a mask? I don't know. I'm just trying to follow where they actually are. <laughs> uh, let's 
see some places there is the need for something really, really dark. And it looks like it's got this square shape, like a box or something. So I'm just going to put that in. And in some of the boats, there actually is a little bit of light shining. Okay, I'm not fully satisfied with the first boat that we see up front. It's like it needs some more character, like some more shapes. I'm just trying to mess with it a little bit. Okay, then the the value of the shadows underneath the boat bridge is uh, really dark, so I have to go full force with the the dark shadow on that one. What's good about this painting, if you guys have noticed, is that I started out being able to do a very undisturbed wash all over the whole page. I didn't need to worry about having to mask off some areas or preserving the white of the paper for some of the areas. So I could simply go in with a steady uh, continuously wash. <laughs> which is always a nice thing because um just makes it look more cohesive when you have made your background in one uh, continuous wash don't know if <laughs> it matters to anyone <laughs> i'm gonna pick up a little bit of that orange and plot it in in here Yeah, what else? Okay, maybe we should let this dry up um, and then I can think about <laughs> what it needs more. Okay, okay, party people. We're almost there. We're almost there. Now for the lifting. There's always something to lift when you're at this stage of an almost finished painting. In my case, I would have focused on the top of the sky and see if I can lift out something that would emulate a little bit of the lighter clouds maybe. So I just take clean water and then a scrubber and it, I'm having handy a piece of, of paper, a kitchen roll or in my case <laughs> toilet paper. And I'm just going for that uh, blooming look that some clouds may have up here in the in the higher atmosphere where the sun is still maybe hitting it on just the top of the clouds. And because I think that this is like a sunset happening over here. <laughs> I will leave this alone, no highlight lifting over there. We just make sure that it's a light, light, light feeling coming from this corner, the left corner. And then, for well, the best part when doing water, is that you can lift out some of the 
water to make it look like ripples. And the closer you are to the the ripples, the longer distance would be between them. So keep in mind that perspective wise you, you don't have like a long distance between the the lifted water ripples way out in the bay. You just want to keep it as a a highlight that happening up close. And it uh, can also help you with shaping the shape from the boat that's in the water. I don't do a ton, but I do make sure that they are horizontal in most case, and then sometimes a downward uh, one to show some motion in the water, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I'm thinking that light might come from the left corner, so I want to lighten up the value of the the waves just around this uh, this area. Yes. Okay. This is a lamp. I want to emphasize that even more by putting in some yellow. So it stands out a little bit more and maybe also make the dark shadow line from the lamppost itself. So we ended up with this lamppost here. And we got the boat here. And <laughs> this is where I'm supposed to go in with the white acrylic. And oh, I can't wait. <laughs> this is fun. It may or may not wreck up the drawing. It's, um, it's a split opinion. But <laughs> I'm cute. Oh, sorry, I got the hiccups. But I'm curious. I want to see how it looks. And I want to um, test it out on this small drawing here because that's what sketchbooks are for. I'm planning to work with a skewer, the tip of a skewer, skewer that I just dip into the ink and then carefully try and see how it will work as a brush. Of course this is totally dry. I'm aiming for like a dry brushed broken line. So I'm just dapping. This makes me think about if you don't want to do this with ink, I actually think that you can take like a craft knife and then um, scrape in 
the white of the paper to get the same tiny white reflection. And this is where I need to be a little bit careful not to go overboard because this is <laughs> this is fun and this is new. <laughs> we all know how it goes, right? Whenever anything is like the first time you're trying it, you always <laughs> go a little bit too far. I so want to do a little bit of reflection on these uh, masks. Is it also called a mask in English? I feel that I'm just not translating the word right. Oh, it doesn't really want to. Maybe I should just um, call it a day and see what I ended up with. Let's take out the tape. I'm just wiping off the skewer and it, I don't even think that I need to clean it additionally, it's just... Okay, let's drum roll, let's take off the tape. I would call this one done. It was fun. I know, it took a long time. Ugh, the stream is like really long. But I spent some time introducing this sketchbook, so all in all, maybe there was like 40 minutes of painting time doing this one. Let me see if I can show it to the camera. This is the finished result. Thank you so much for watching this first day of Watercolor Month, July 2021, kickstarted from my end of the table. I'll try and um, see if I can throw out a video here and there. I can't promise there will be like one every day, but this weekend I'm going to catch up and work at, on at least three more watercolor tiny small paintings. So let's see if I manage to record something and throw it up <laughs> on YouTube. So, hi!